If this world is meant to break your heart, why should we be so attached to it? Our loved ones or anyone or anything we love is not ours. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it can be gone in a second. How can we not be attached if it's only going to hurt us in the end? And how can we be prepared for this heartbreak? Bismillah. First, there's too many questions in that. No? Where you're saying, how can it be? It is because we are sent to this world and we are also part of this world. Aren't we made from part of this world? Yes. That's why we get attached to this world. Didn't Allah put desire in us? Yes. And that desire, it is there. And that desire can lead us to a wrong actions in this world. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an ego, a nafs? Yes, he did. And the nafs is inclining us to do what? It's inclining us to go to the fire. And to go to the fire is when you pass by this dunya, you enter into the fire. No one ever goes to the fire bypassing this dunya. Meaning the attraction of this dunya and what the dunya has to offer. Because everyone lives here. No one is living in the skies or living in another dimension. Let's not enter there, please. These days, even Muslims, even so-called sheikhs talk about UFOs. Allah, Allah. I say, what's wrong with you? Little, little thing or UFO. Uh, to pick up this hadith and saying about these creatures. Oh, you see, this is UFO. Talking about Mi'raj, and they say, you see, Prophet was on a spaceship. You know how stupid you sound? Do you realize? I don't like to say this often, but if kafirs were to hear you understand, they would laugh at you. And I would agree with them. So anyway, we have honor. Please, in 1400 years, we don't have to resort to such. Uh, there's a reason why it's called science fiction, okay? It's not science truth. It's called science fiction. Fiction means lies. Last I checked to lie in Islam, it is a sin. So be careful. So anyway, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Saying what? <laughs> How can we not be so attached to this? Uh, I was talking about Allah has put us all those things in us. Of course we are going to be attached. Don't say how we are not going to. We are going to be attached. Because he has sent us to this world. And he has put us, in, we are in enemy territory. And Allah has put us, the enemy inside of us. The ego is inside of us. Shaitan is around us. We are in the dunya. And the desires are there. So you're asking, why are we attached? This is the reason Allah has put us. But Allah has also given us the key and the solution to this. And not only the solution, and he says, if you are to step on your enemies, on your ego, on this dunya, on your hawa, and on shaitan, you will unlock that power that I've given you. Only by stepping on this, you will unlock that. And you will use that power instead of pulling you down. You will use that power to propel yourself, to push yourself closer to me. And all these things that Allah has put in us is not for fun. All this is for us to know ourselves and to know our Lord. All this is such a heavy responsibility that only Allah has put on mankind to carry. Only mankind can carry. Not even angels can carry this. Are we understanding this? How heavy, how difficult this is? How much trust Allah has given to us? Angels couldn't understand it before it was put into practice. That's why they question Allah to say, you're creating man and it's only going to give bloodshed to this world. And later, thousands of years later, they're still... Allah is making them to ask and they're still wondering and Allah then put the nafs and the hawa and everything that is put on mankind, on everyone, on these angels, angels, and they failed. So our responsibility uh, and what uh,
knowledge and understanding of our Lord comes together with that. Allah did not just put us on all this on us and left us alone. Never. We cannot blame Allah saying, why you put the ego on me? Why you put it? We can never blame Allah. We cannot blame Allah for anything. Allah sent 124,000 prophets. Not one, not two. 124,000 prophets. And He sent millions or billions or trillions of what? Allah, the friends of Allah. Allah sent us books. Let's say books of instruction, how to live in this world and how to return to Him. Allah gave us intelligence. Allah gave us conscience, our heart. That our Shaykh says, even if Allah is not sending any messenger, any books, no nothing, that's why we're calling ourselves the Millet of Ibrahim salam. This nation is still calling us us the Millet of Ibrahim salam because just by intelligence alone that Allah has given to mankind, not to angels, that kind of intelligence, and not to the animals, we can understand our Lord. We can know what is Allah and what is not. If not, what is not Allah? Like Ibrahim is saying, this is not Allah. This is not Allah. This is not Allah. He's never left us alone. It is always there. But for the man who is shutting his eyes, closing his eyes, he can deny a thousand suns. He's going to say, no, I don't see anything. What can you do? The prophets, they came to say, wake up, open your eyes to see. Man is just saying, no, I cannot see anything. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no forcing in religion. So the man must come to understand that by himself, willingly, in this world, in the grave, or in the hereafter. May Allah save us from that kind of punishment, inshallah. Ah, as much is enough, inshallah.